G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at what is one of my absolute favourite mods for Space Engineers, the Modular Encounters Spawner by Meridius9 or Lucas depending on where you know him from. The Modular Encounters Spawner or MES is a framework for controlling the spawns of a whole raft of different NPC encounters that go far beyond what's available in the base vanilla game. Before we talk about what MES adds though, let's take a look at what's available in vanilla. We've got our wolves and spiders. These are frequently more annoying than being a real threat, besides being bizarre creatures that eat your components whole. We've also got cargo ships, and in space you can encounter hostile cargo ships that will fly in a straight line somewhere near you. You can choose to engage them or ignore them, and if engaged, some will call for help and further hostile ships will appear to attempt to fight you off. You can have some real fun if you tie your hand behind your back and avoid some of the easily exploitable strategies like jamming their gun barrels with your clones. And then there are random encounters. These are also in space and you can come across briefly flickering beacons that advertise the locations of mostly hostile wrecks of various types. In my opinion, these have been put together very nicely and a few of them even have some pretty cool surprises and story elements to them. And then finally, we've got our space pirates. Really, these are more space drones than space pirates. These are actively hostile ships and small drones that will attack you if you come within their sphere of influence. And with the upgrades to the enemy AI that came with the survival update, the variety of drones you face has increased dramatically. So there's a decent selection of NPC content in vanilla that's been growing recently, but there's a big problem with it for someone who likes playing in a natural gravity field. Other than the rather horrible wolves and spiders, none of it works on planets or moons. You will not get cargo ships flying over your planetary base, you will not get random encounters on the surface as you drive around looking for something to make your planetary home feel alive. You'll be left there, alone. And safe, at least from hostiles. No one is safe from their own piloting mistakes. For me, this is one of the biggest benefits of adding MES and some of its content packs to your game. You can have planetary cargo ships, you can have enemy bases spawn on the surface of planets and moons, you can even have enemy ships that follow you from space and chase you right to the surface of your lunar base. In the areas where MES doubles up with the vanilla systems, if you've got the right content packs installed, you'll be able to dramatically increase the amount of different encounters you have, increasing variety and in many cases, substantially increasing the challenge. So how does MES work? MES is a framework. Installed on its own, you will likely notice absolutely no difference in your game, because MES does not include any ships, any bases, or content of any kind. It is the tool that allows these things to spawn, that controls how they spawn and how often. To gain any real benefits from MES, you need to install one of the content packs available to it. So let's talk about how to set MES up so that you can add some new NPC content to your game. To start off with, we're going to add in some planetary cargo ships and some procedurally spawned planetary stations. We're going to start with those since that's the area where the vanilla experience is most lacking. The two packs I'm going to look at today are Air Traffic and Surface Occupation. These were both published by Lucas himself and are very well polished as a result. To install these on your own save, which can either be a new game or an old game, ensure you have experimental mode enabled, which can be done by going to the options menu from the main menu, then game, and then checking the box next to experimental. Without experimental mode enabled, you will not be able to use any mods. Next to enable the mods for your game, you can either through a new game and custom game, add it through this mods button here, or if you want to add the mods to an existing save, click load game, Select the save, edit settings, and click mods here. If you have a large list of mods like I do, it may take a little while to load up. When it does load though, you'll be able to use the search bar up the top to add the three mods we're going to look at today. Modular Encounters Spawner. We can either double click on that or click the little arrow to move it across. We're going to add Air Traffic. And we're going to add the Surface Occupation mod. The Modular Encounter Spawner, as mentioned, is the framework. These two are content packs. Air Traffic adds the planetary cargo ships and Surface Occupation adds a bunch of different bases that can spawn on the planets for you to be able to fight against. Now that we've got our three mods in our list, we can click OK 
and then go to our advanced game options. In here, there are two things I would recommend you enable even though you strictly don't have to. I would enable in-game scripts and drones. This is because there are many packs for MES that rely on in-game scripts for advanced behaviors for the ships or the bases, and there are many packs that will spawn drones using the drone spawning system. And that means you need to have both of these enabled. And now that we've got in-game scripts and drones enabled, we can click OK and we can load our game. You'll see the occasional flyby of a cargo ship, many of which are bristling with weapons. And when you start to explore the surface of your planet, you'll come across enemy facilities to engage with and hopefully loot. At the top of the description, I've added links to the MES FAQ and the Admin and Modders Guide. These are both incredibly useful pieces of information if you're having trouble with these mods and are worth taking a look at if you'd like to tweak the spawner settings to your liking. These settings files are generated for each save individually, so you can have different spawn settings depending on the world you're playing on. So if you're playing with friends, you can make it harder or easier depending on what your friends like. And then if you're playing on your own, you can adjust to your own playstyle. And you won't need to change that every time you switch between those saves. To change any of the settings, you'll need to open up Explorer and go to percent app data percent slash space engineers slash saves. And then you'll likely be met with a single folder that has a whole long string of numbers. In this case, I've got two because I've logged in and saved games in Space Engineers with two separate Steam profiles. So if you share your computer with others, you may be met with two and you will need to figure out which one of these has your save file in it. In my case, I know it's this one. And then go into the save folder for the game you've loaded up with MES. Inside, you'll see a storage folder. And then finally, a folder with MES in the name. Open it and you'll find the XML config files for you to edit. Ensure you load the game once with MES enabled so these files are generated. Using something like Notepad++, you'll be able to open and edit these files to suit your own playstyle. I'm not going to cover all the available options here as there are too many of them, but we'll take a look at a few of the more regularly used ones and some of the ones that might help to adapt everything to your own playstyle. If we open config-general.xml, you'll see several lines for toggling the various forms of encounters that MES is capable of managing. These are toggled with true-false for being enabled or disabled. If there's a particular type of encounter you'd like to turn off, you can do that here. For example, if I decided I didn't like getting beaten to a pulp, I might turn off boss encounters by changing true to false, or I just avoid the boss encounter marker. You know, either or. Another useful area in this config is the blacklists. If there's a grid you don't like for some reason, for example, it causes sim speed drops when it spawns or continues to cause sim speed drops even after it initially spawns, then this part is where you can block it out without removing the whole mod that contains it. The method I'm going to show you for removing these spawns is just one of many. I think it's probably the optimal one since it's relatively easy to use and more importantly, it stops the spawns from happening at all. So it doesn't delete them once they're spawned as some of the blacklist methods do. It actually stops them from happening whatsoever. So say we wanted to get rid of this DBS observation outpost from our spawn list. What we need to do is open up chat, type slash MES dot get eligible spawns at position. And you need to capitalize it as is written right there. If you don't, it doesn't work. When you press enter, you'll see that we have a list of eligible spawn groups at position sent to our clipboard. We can then switch over to our text editor and in it, we can paste our list of spawns. So the spawn we were looking for was our observation outpost. So that's going to be this one right here. The name we need to copy to put into our blacklist is everything from this first bracket to the end of the line. So if we then control C to copy that, go over to our config general and paste this in our NPC spawn group blacklist, that will then stop that from ever spawning in our game. You can add as many items as you like to this blacklist. All you need to do is create another line and do the string and then between those two greater than less than symbols, type in or paste the name of the spawn group that you're going to be blacklisting. So the spawn group is this name here. 
before we move on from the blacklist, let's take a closer look at the text dump we got from the get eligible spawns command. This will show you every single thing that MES is capable of spawning at the location your player is at when you type the command. So in this case, we were on a planet. That means we've got our planetary installations eligible as well as our planetary cargo ships, but we don't have any random encounters or space slash lunar cargo ship encounters. This is really, really handy when you want to find out why a particular spawn isn't happening in your location. You can check to see if it turns up in this list at all. If it doesn't turn up in this list, then it's because of your location not being eligible for that specific spawn or some other error in the installation of that pack. Now let's go back to our folder with all of our config files in it. And then let's open up planetaryinstallations.xml. In here, we've got a couple of things that I would normally like to modify for my game. And that's because of the way that MES works with spawning planetary installations. The planetary installations spawn based on player distance traveled. So you have to move a certain distance over the surface of the planet before MES will attempt to spawn the next base. And if you're in a particularly rocky area, it may not find a suitable spawn location at all. We can increase the chance of getting lots of bases by reducing our player distance spawn trigger here. By default, it's set to six kilometers of distance traveled. We can reduce this and substantially increase the number of spawns available by taking it to say, 1000 meters. That way every kilometer it will attempt a new spawn, giving us increased chances to have multiple bases spawning around our immediate area. Another thing to note is that this is on a per player basis. Every player in the game will be checked for this. So if you have three, four, five people in the local area, you're going to substantially increase the number of spawns because everyone's going to be triggering their own. And that's why when you see people playing co-op with this enabled, they are going to experience much, much greater numbers of bases than you would experience playing solo, unless you change this trigger and some of the other settings in here. Now that we've had a look at a few of the things you can do with the configuration files, let's have a look at a couple of useful chat commands. If you go to the admin and modders guide, which again is linked in the description, and then scroll down to admin and debug, you'll see here a whole bunch of different chat commands we can use. There are things that allow you to spawn space cargo ships or individual encounters of all the different types, or even just spawn any encounter at all, as you can see here. So let's take a look at a few of those now. Once you've got your mods and everything set up, you may find that you want to spawn something in straight away. You don't want to wait for the spawner to do it for you. So if you are playing in single player or if you're an admin on a server that you're playing, you should be able to use these chat commands. If you open up chat by pressing enter, then type slash mes dot spawn dot. And in this case, we're going to go for a planetary cargo ship. So we'll type planetary cargo ship all correctly capitalized like that to make sure the command works, then hit enter, you'll see that it's now going to attempt to spawn a planetary cargo ship. And over there, you can see we've got the WMI hunchback dropship. Similarly, we can type slash MES dot spawn dot planetary, well, that is not how you spell planetary, planetary installation. And all these commands are written out very clearly in that guide. So MES spawn planetary installation, and it's going to attempt to spawn a planetary installation. Now you may notice nothing has popped up on our list. If we press Alt F10 and go to our entity list, you'll see that we've still only got the Hunchback dropship. Sometimes, as mentioned before, if you're in very rocky terrain, you may not get any bases spawning. Also, the spawner for planetary installations can take a little bit longer to run because it has to find somewhere suitable. But in this case, I think it's probably failed to find somewhere. So to run that command again, press enter, press your up arrow and press enter again. You can also scroll back through multiple different commands that you've run or chats that you've entered. And you can keep doing that until something spawns. There we go. Got to look out to how that spawned. We might get a couple of other things as well. There are many, many more settings we could look at. 
But for now, I think those are the important ones so that you can get going and have some fun with this. Remember to look into Lucas's FAQ as well as the modern admin guide for some of the admin commands and that'll give you a bit of an idea into more of these configuration file changes that you can make. In future tutorials, I'll take a look at some of the other configuration settings we can change to enable our game to be even closer to the ideal that we're after. And I'll also take a look at some of the other packs that are available out there. In the description, there'll be links to a whole bunch of them that I've already collected, but I'll be going into them in a bit more detail in the future. So there's all that and plenty more to come, and I will see you then.